Hey guys, your girl is back. Back in Bever. Not really, because she's back in Campbellsville. <laughs> yeah, but um, this is the last semester of me being here. And then we up and outie, okay? But um, my first day, well, last, my last first, first last. My first day of the last semester of my bachelor's degree journey is tomorrow, Wednesday, and it starts at 8 a.m. Not ready for that part. Don't like 8 a.m., but yeah. Um, so I'm a cook, cause I gotta prepare. You know, I wanna feel like I'm loved, so I gotta love myself, cause I ain't got nobody else to love me. Single life. Anyways, but um, I gotta cook, and then I gotta finish like cleaning up my room and my office room. That way I can go into this last semester rejuvenated free whatever the case is and just feeling good so just i don't know what i'm cooking y'all gonna come on a journey with me if i gotta go to the store i gotta go to the store and i gotta figure out my outfit but anyways all this stuff gotta happen and then i'm gonna go to sleep because i'm not staying up late because i got 8 a.m but anyways yeah all of that's going on i know i'm talking fast and you shut up goodbye Why Shouldn't be telling you people that y'all don't know where I live, so it really don't matter. Um, I got these. I don't know if y'all can see that. I got these. Uh, cause you know your girl like a little bit of mushroom. She like a mushroom. Um, and then hold on now, hold it up. And then I got these. She like a nice little corn too. And I be I be eating the corns up, honey. We be eating the corns up. Don't tell nobody. Um, but yeah, we be doing it up. Um. I just don't know what I want to do for like, I don't know what I want to do for meat. Cause I have meat, but um, like, I don't know what exactly I want to do. Let me look, I got these. And you know, this is, I'm, this is like a lifesaver. Cause girl, you don't feel like cooking all the time. So what you gonna do? Turn this on, one of them. It's just one, anything. Put under that water, don't play with it. Don't play with it, okay? So, um, yeah, real simple, real easy. We gonna try and handle that. I gotta figure out how to do, or do I want rice? We gonna say these, honey, we gonna say these. Um, but yeah, I'm really just trying to figure out like, what exactly I wanna eat. Fruit. We got this, this, and this. I still don't exactly know what route I'm trying to go. I really don't want to cook, but I need to treat myself because clearly I'm hungry. Clearly. These be good in the refrigerator. Get on it. I'm putting y'all on. I'm putting y'all on so much. Even though I got this from my brother. Or bone. Anyways. Yeah, so let's get you started. Uh, while we're here, we're gonna do uh, a QA because I've been told y'all I was gonna do this a long time ago. But um I could never really find the right video to do it. So I'm just do it now because I can. So I had uh, a whole lot of crazy questions on top of good questions that I had, and you know who you are. Uh but I had a, a couple good questions as well as some crazy questions that I'm gonna answer all of them though. I'm trying my best to answer all of them in this video. So like the first two or the first one came from somebody talking about some why am I rolled? Um, cause the fact that I'm dusting you all the time, it say a whole lot, okay? But anyway, no, I'm kidding. But um, yeah, that was the first question. Second question is my my four by four experience. I don't like talking about the four by four. I hate the four by four. Everything in me hates that race. Everything in me hates that race. Well, okay, I started that like, when did I start running? We didn't have a choice. Back in Parker Rec, I started running track in the 
fourth grade. So I was nine years old when I started running track. I started running four by four that early. Um, so I never liked, like after my first 400 that I ran, as a nine year old, I ran a minute, 15 seconds. I died, like I have the video and everything, it's awful. But um, I never enjoyed a 400 after that. But I was a 2-4 runner back then because it was too many other people that ran the short races that was on the team. And so it was just best for me to be a 2-4 athlete. And that was the dumbest thing. Anyways, it wasn't dumb. It, it prepared me for what I needed to be prepared for. But um, yeah, so I'd probably say my best 4x4 experience is when me and my sister were running the 4x4 together um, because her age group, because we're, we're two years apart, her age group had uh, nobody else running it or like one other team or something like that. I can't really remember. It was so long ago. But her age group had to run with my age group and we ran together. This is kind of embarrassing on her part, but I don't think it was meant to be embarrassing because she was never one of them type people that cared, even cared for 400. So she was gonna do what she wanted to do anyways. But um, since like the 400s or whatever was my race, she was the same leg that I was and their team was ahead of us because of course they're older than us. But uh, she was probably like around the 100, like not the 100, the 300 or like the 250 range by the time I got the baton. And so um, I called all the way up to her and I think she might've been at the 300. But I caught all the way up to her around like the 200 mark. And when she was passing by me, she was like, good job. That almost brought me to tears, even back then. And I was mean back then. That almost brought me to tears. And I was just like, girl, I wish I could run with you for real, for real. But if I don't, then that's not gonna be cool. And on top of that, my coach bet me if I beat my sister, he gonna give me some ice cream. And guess what I did? I beat her, cause I wanted the ice cream. And it took him a long time to give me the ice cream. But anyways. Um, but yeah, that was probably the best 4x4 experience I've ever had. Uh, the worst 4x4 experience I've ever had was, was it last year? Year before? Whatever time that was. I think that was last year. I ran a 58, which is not, I mean, it's not good, but it's not bad either. It's good for me because I ain't never ran faster than a minute in a, in a 400. Um, maybe because I didn't know how to and it hurt, so why would I want to? But you know what? I split a 58 on my leg of the 400, on the 4x4, four four, and uh, the way I was feeling, it, <laughs> it just didn't feel good. And I, mm -mm. the way that I wanted to give up, like I don't think I've ever wanted to give up so bad in the race, that one was the one. That was the worst 4x4 four four experience I've ever had. And I've had many. So much so where somebody stopped me from getting a medal at state. But you know what? We're not gonna talk about it. I'm gonna clean this out real quick. That much water in it, baby. Calm down. Thank you. I should probably take my watch off. Probably, I should probably do that. Oh, that's great. Great, good, fine dandy. You ain't see that. Okay, so listen, I had to write the rest of the questions down because it's a lot and I can't remember off the top of my head. So, um, the next two questions, it's a two for one combo. Um, my most memorable track and field um, experience and then my worst track and field experience. Um, the best one is probably free. I keep forgetting what I'm supposed to do. Okay, the best one will probably be when, um, I don't know. My best one would be when I made the finals at uh, NAIs last year. In the outdoor 100, um, yeah, I was, for one, not expecting it uh, because I thought it took a lot more. And this is gonna sound bad because it seemed like I didn't put in a lot of work, but I did. I thought it took a lot more to get there. Um, because I, I did work hard. I, I worked very hard that year to get what I wanted out of the, out of the uh, season or whatever. But just to make history for one, myself, and then for two, a program that has never experienced it before 
And then for me to do it, knowing that I want to leave a mark everywhere I go, it meant a lot to me. Um, I cried, I did, but that was probably my best experience that I had. Um, my worst one is so many, it's so many. Um, the worst one would probably be the, um, oh, it's over there. One sec. The worst one would probably be when, and I'm gonna give y'all some tea, hold on. I'm gonna give y'all some tea, okay? The worst one was when I found out uh, the girls' high school coach was sleeping around with one of the other athletes, honey. Yeah, she did that. Um, but yeah, she was, and I feel like it was my fault too, because she was the one, I felt like anyway, it could have just been the hard work I was putting in myself and I gave her the credit for it. Probably didn't do next for me. But uh, yeah, she, I brought her to the school because I thought, oh yeah, she got me down to my 12 seconds in the 100 that was out, right? No, wasn't her. But I brought her along, put her on the coaching staff. Well, I didn't put her on the coaching staff, let's be clear. I put in a good word for her to be on the coaching staff. And um, they accepted her. She came here. And mind you, she was, and this is gonna sound mean, but she was a homeschool person. So she never really got the high school experience and that could have been why she acted the way she did. Um, but yeah, so she came to the school and she started being like real nasty and stuck up, acting like, oh no, the girls team is this, the girls team is that, da 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 da. I'm like, last time I checked, it was a team. Just saying. But um, yeah, so she started acting a fool in front of everybody's face. And then come to find out, we was cool with who the girl's boyfriend was at the time. And he was telling us, and we thought it was a joke because guys joke like this, but he was telling us, oh yeah, the coach is sleeping with my girlfriend. We were like, what? Stop playing, stop playing. Come to find out it was true. It took a whole trip, got um, got a hotel and everything for state, like to spend the night. And they did it up. They did it up. So yeah, and they're still together to this day. If y'all see this video, hey, don't really care, I'm talking about you. Um, but yeah, that was my worst college experience. Um, and then, the next question, um, how do I stay level-headed uh, through adversity within my sport and with my education? Um, so honestly, a good question. I've dealt with adversity all my life. And I know a lot of people gonna say, everybody's dealt with adversity uh, all day life. Did it? No, mine's is, mine's is very much different. It's very much different. Than, than what a lot of people experience. I mean, most people probably deal with the fact that they don't have a lot of money or don't have the clothes that everybody else have when they're growing up, all of the, that's small stuff to me. That's, that's small stuff to me. Cause even to this day, I still don't wear what everybody else wears. I don't really care too all the time. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you're gonna see me pop out with some of the same stuff. But anyways, back to the question. I grew up um, looking different from everybody else through my attire. Um, and with that came, and I was poor. Let's be very clear. I didn't know I was poor because my family treated me or treated the environment that we were in always in a loving, it was just loving all the time. So you, it, it was like you never really had time to stop and think, girl, you don't have no money. You're not giving the toys that you want. You're not getting this, you're not getting that. No, that never really crossed my mind because our parents helped me out, or they, I'm not gonna say they shielded us, but they shielded us from what was actually happening that was bigger than us, because money problems was bigger than us. Um, so, yeah. I've dealt with adversity my whole life, not being able to wear, or I'm not saying not being able to, but like, not wearing pants and only wearing certain dresses. Um, that was hard, because why can't I be like everybody else? But anyways, as of now, adversity in sports and education, I would say that it is making sure I remain who I am no matter what situation comes my way or who is around. 
I shouldn't have to change who I am because somebody else appeared, you know? So just praying and just staying focused on what my goal is in the end. That's why I'm able to say like that, honestly. It ain't no other reason but God. <laughs> Next question. I don't even want to answer this question. My brother asked, how long have we been best friends? We've never been best friends and we never will be best friends. <laughs> I don't like you. He's always bothering me. But anyways, um, dream vacation. I was talking about this for a long time. Listen, y'all. I want to go out of the country to Bali. Bali is my dream vacation. That's where I want to be. And that's why I plan to be in a couple of years. Like, very short amount of time. I plan to be there. Okay, next question. What is my favorite wake-up routine? Or, like, like my wake-up routine, you know? My favorite one, let's be clear. My favorite one is to stay asleep past 12 o'clock in the afternoon and not get up out of the bed. That's my favorite one. But, you know what, I gotta be productive and be a woman... Your girl has to get up. Um, I typically like to um, put my clothes on first. That way I like, I feel like I'm, I'm having to go somewhere. And then I eat because your girl gotta eat. She gotta eat. Cause if she don't eat, forget the rest of the day. Um, but yeah, I eat and then I brush my teeth, wash my face with, you know, see the feel, I showed y'all all of that. In one of the previous videos, brush my teeth, wash my face. Um, now, recently, like, I've been trying to make sure my hair looks a little better. My skin looks a little better. I'm just trying to make sure, like, all the small stuff that I'm doing is, like, meaningful. That way, I'm not just waking up every day and dragging my feet to get out the door. But, yeah. That's the wake-up routine. I'm acting like a fool today. Anyways, what's the next question? Okay, next question is, where do I see myself in 15 to 20 years? Um, wonderful question, because 15 to 20 years, I'll be... <laughs> I'm already considering my birthday came around. So, in 15 to 20 years, in 20 years, I'll be 42. My goodness. I'll be 42 in 20 years. So, um, I should see, I should be good and married by then. I should have all my kids. My kids be done. Um, most of them should be in middle or high school, I'm hoping, by that period of time. And, uh, uh, I should be deep in my career by that point. I should be making good money. I should, by that point, I feel like I'll be able to, I want it to be sooner than that, but if it hasn't happened already, Get my parents the house that they deserve. Um, I feel like they deserve it. I live too good of a childhood for them not to get what they deserve. So that would probably be the next step for me, um, 15, 20 years from now. Of course, making sure me and my family is settled, um, as well as my husband's family, on um, wherever they are, uh, if they in Georgia, if they ain't, I don't know. Um, making sure everybody's just good where they at. Um, as well as me being good with my man. If I get one! Oh my god. If I can get one! If I can get one! No, I'm kidding. But, uh, yeah. Worst restaurant experience? I don't know what we was doing. This was back in our poor days. We went to Applebee's. Applebee's is good, though. People be sleep on the Applebee's. But we went to Applebee's, and uh, I was drinking my drink. We were all sitting at the table, all six of us. And the roach go across the table. And we don't make no big scene because we ain't people that's supposed to do stuff like that. We just not. Christian people ain't supposed to be out here just trying to do too much. Um, but yeah, we was, we was out here trying to live our best life. And the uh, roach go across the table. We kindly tell our wait waiter slash waitress, whoever it was, that there's a roach under the cup. 
Because we had a free cup. I don't even know how. I don't know where the cup came from. I don't know. But we had a free cup. And we told him the cup, the that the roach was underneath the cup. And they got us a new table. And our meal was free after that. But we never went back to that Arby's again. Not Arby's. That's not what it is. We never went back to that Applebee's again. Because for what? Why are we going to get put through that twice? Um, because no telling what they got in that kitchen. No telling what they got in that kitchen. Let's be real clear. But yeah, so that was the worst experience. Uh, top five bucket list is the next question. Girl, I don't know. I don't know. I do know, like I told y'all, I'm going to go to Bali. That's on my bucket list. I got to get out the country. I've never been out the country before. So that's, um, that's the first thing on my bucket list. Second thing, probably be go to um, Oregon, Track Town USA, never been, want to go, been saying I wanted to go. I'm not going to get too much into it because it's a whole lot behind it. Um, yeah, so that's that. So Oregon, Bali, oh shoot. Let me wait for that to do what it do. Oregon, Bali, um, is it bad I don't really have a bucket list? <laughs> oh! Because all my stuff that's on a bucket list is stuff that, that's supposed to happen. Like, I'm not gonna say it, but yeah. Them two, that's all I got on there. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be five, but I only got two. No, no, it's not. I want to be an Olympian. The freak? <laughs> to be an Olympian. Yeah, that, that's, be, that's another one. And then two, as my Olympic status, I want, to be, I want to be able to let people know that adversity and knowing how to move through it is okay. That's mine. Don't really have nothing else to say about it. That's all I got for the people. Another funny question. I got two funny questions. Somebody asked me if I could buy them food. If I could barely buy myself food, what makes you think I'm gonna buy you food? Let's be very clear. And then number two, you're very slick for this. Why do I be stinking when I get out the shower? That be you. That be you. That's why you be the one sending them stank seats at your, at your job. That ain't me, that's you. But anyways, yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked why I run in the skirt. Um, very easy question. Well, it might be complicated to y'all, but it's easy to me. I run in the skirt because uh, I'm a holiness Christian. And as my ordinances say, um, and as we um, agree with the Bible, is that we are to be modest. Um, and modesty for us says that we need to be not letting the world see everything that we got. Simple as that. So, best way to resolve that, wear a skirt. Simple. So, when I compete, I wear a skirt, but I wear leggings underneath. That way you're not seeing my undies because why are we letting the world see our undies? Um, but yeah, so we're doing that. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Let me know if that's not good enough. I'll give a better example. Okay, let me wash my hands. Okay, next question. Somebody asked what my sprint and jump goals are. For this year, this kind of coincides with another question. But for this year, it's to um go 6'3", then the long jump. 6'3", uh, and then... Since I'm not doing, yeah, the 60, it'll be 7.3 or lower. I think I can do it though. Somebody asked, how do you get a good start? It honestly just comes down to reaction time. If you mentally ain't telling yourself, okay, the gun just went off, I have to go, SOL, so sorry. That's really just the meat of the matter, if we're being honest with you. 
But um, to go like with the next few steps of it, you have to make sure that everything that you practice is how you perform. So if you're not, um, if you're not making sure every step that you take after you get out of the box is powerful, ain't no need for a block start at that point. Ain't no need for it. Um, you got to try and use, cause you got to think. Somebody who don't use blocks compared to somebody that do use blocks, their time is going to be slightly different. But that slight difference makes a huge difference in such a short race. So you got to think about stuff like that. Just being powerful, making sure you stay low to the ground, make sure you have the right angles, low to your uh, feet in the pads. So many answers, so many, yeah. I mean, it varies. As long as you're comfortable, as long as you're comfortably uncomfortable. That's what you'll get through it. Okay, somebody asked me if I got a boyfriend. Simple, no, I don't. I don't. It's quite unfortunate that I don't have a boyfriend, I'm single. Um, but I am looking for somebody who can serve the purpose that I need them to serve. Answer gets deeper, but simple answer is no. Okay, so I had to pull out the, the thing for this one because who's your first auntie's uncle's son whose grandmother lived on 42nd and Hill by your ex-best friend? That's you. That's you, friend. That's you. Okay? Next. What does it take to be a student athlete? Wonderful question. Um... Honestly, it takes it's it takes a lot. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, a lot of people probably don't think that it does, but because a lot of people probably just go through it and be like, oh, it's just you know, go to practice, go to class. No, no, it's not just that. I can tell you that right now. You have to have some sort of understanding of who you are, why you do what you do. This jump look good. Okay, I'm sorry, I got caught on. Caught off guard with that one. Um, you have to understand who you are, why you do what you do, and the purpose of why you do what it is that you do. Because a lot of people just come here focusing on, oh shoot, I'm just here to get a scholarship because I don't want to have to pay for school. Because I know I just want to do this. No. Even if that is your goal, you should be trying to focus on being the best version of that student athlete that you can be because you're not there just for you. You have to understand, somebody is paying you to do a job. People don't realize that. Everything in life has a purpose. Somebody is paying you to come and run for them, to put on your best, to put your best foot forward, to perform. Somebody's paying you to do that by giving you a scholarship. So why, why is it so hard for people to just be like, okay, let me be the best version of me that I can be instead of sitting here begging and pleading for whatever I want. You think a job is going to do that? Be real clear. You really think a job is going to treat you like how y'all be acting with these track teams? No. So treat it like a job. Everything is almost like a job. So yeah, being a student athlete is not easy. And then also having to make sure that you're on top of grades, making sure that you're on top of speaking with your professors about missing class because sometimes that go left field. We don't we don't have coordinators that do stuff like that. We have to do it ourselves and then have makeups for the classes that we miss or the tests that we miss. And then sometimes the freaking school we talk about some oh no we don't take we don't take uh unexcused absences. They just still count as regular absences so they're not allowed to make what? So what's the point? The school I go to is a little bit complicated. I'm just be real with you. And I don't like them. But I'm getting my degree here, so I gotta like them. But yeah, so being a student athlete is it's um it takes a lot more grit, determination, and focus that a lot of people don't understand, especially when you live by yourself. Um, because that's all you tend to think about. It's just, okay, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. 
it's never a rest break. And a lot of people don't realize that. It's always a moving fast type of lifestyle, which I like. I like it. That's why I'm still in it. And I have goals past this. But yeah, being a student athlete is not all it's cracked up to be for some people, but for me, it's great. Okay, next question is, what do I get out of being a role model when it's for everybody else? Mm. That's a good question. A really, really great question. Um, It's so much that you get out of it, honestly. And what, what's going to be crazy is that a lot of people are going to be like, that don't even make sense. Why are you doing something when it ain't for just you? You're not ever living your life for just you. You're never living your life for you. It's so many people that's watching you. It's always so many people that's watching you. So why are we going to sit here and act like your life is only for you? We've already been put on this earth to do a mission that we don't even know what direction is going to go in. We just know that him up there is up to something. That's all we know. And so most of the times when I take when I take something like that into consideration, I tell myself, okay, if I'm not living for me, what's the best way that I can show somebody else how to what's the easiest way that I can show somebody to get around when I've already done it the hard way? That's T. But yeah, just thinking about it like that, it's just like, okay. Yeah, girl, you got this, 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 and this going on, but you got all these little babies out here watching you. What are you gonna do? You gonna show them to give up? You gonna show them to, to sit in the corner and cry? Are you gonna show them that even though, yes, times are hard, can we move on from this? Can we be stronger than what I'm feeling and move past it? Because they're looking at you. At the end of the day, they're looking. I got people that's in Georgia watching me all the way in Kentucky. So yeah, I gotta scale my P's and Q's all the time. And also it helps me because it's like, okay, they're watching me, so that means I have to stay on my P's and Q's. It, it keeps that, okay, I'm not allowed to do what I want to do just because I want to do it. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, uh, since I'm almost done, we're going to soon to soon wrap this up. Um, somebody asks, what are my, hold on, one sec. Somebody asks, what are my career goals after college? Um, so I'm assuming that's, I don't know. My career goals after college are... They've changed recently because of some minor hiccups, but they are to begin my master's, no, after college. After college, Lex. Okay, I got you, listen. After college, I plan to start my career uh, as an athletic trainer with hopefully a pro team, and if not a pro team, a very good D1 school. Um, so like possibly SEC, Power 5, whatever the case is. And um, build from there. Um, get a very good networking with a whole lot of different people, whether that's people that are associated with uh, athletic training or just um, team operations, whatever the case is. Just being involved in all of that type of stuff. <coughs> <coughs> being involved in all of that. And then um, just expanding where I want to expand. Because the reality is, I want to do it with a pro team. So I got a network to get there. I already know a couple people that uh, work with. They're not like associated. No, they're associated with. They don't work with them, but they're associated with um, one of the pro teams that I've wanted to work for. So I'm trying to take advantage of that when I get out of college. Um, and if that don't work out, then so be it. So then we'll still find what we want to do and I want to do it right too because I've come to find out living this college lifestyle and being around the the intern like the internship that I have I gotta do it right I gotta show the people how to do it because what you're not gonna do 
is disrespect another sport just because it's another sport. I digress. Get off of it, girl. Get off of it. Okay. Uh, last question because food is almost done. What are my accolades and how did I get them? Working hard? Yeah. So I got them because I told myself before I got here that what I'm doing isn't to boast or be proud about, but to show other people how to be humble about being great, if that makes sense. Basically showing people the ropes of how to be great. Because I already knew, like, I'm confident. I'm confident, but I'm not cocky. There's a difference. And so I give people the, uh, the benefit of the doubt all the time. If you want to be cocky about whatever you got, fine, so be it. You can do that. But me? No, 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 honey. You, 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 God got me. And the way you're going, that, 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 that ain't the godly way. That ain't the godly way. So, yeah. Just doing, doing it the, the way that I feel like God has spoken to me to do it. So, listening to my coaches, listening to my parents, not listening to everything the coaches actually said. And that basically means having knowledge to know what's right for you and what's wrong for you. And that that's basically saying like, okay, if my coach is telling me to do 300 pound squat and I got to meet tomorrow, sit yourself down. But yeah, stuff like that. Okay, my accolades, um, <clears throat> 20 time All-American across Miss South Conference, NAIA, and NCCAA. Um, individually and as a team so i am 2022 indoor 4x2 champion uh 2023 no 2022 <clears throat> indoor long jump champion i am 2023 uh 60 meter all-american NCCAA. All of this stuff is for NCCAA, if you didn't know. Um, for conference, I got a lot of first and third medals. I can't tell you all of them. I just can't. <clears throat> That's both team and individual. NAIA, I've been indoor and outdoor, long jump All-American um, at nationals. Uh, I got six for indoor, fifth for outdoor. Um, it honestly should've been first, but because I was—that's the thing. I got six, but you know the the measurements were this close. I ended up getting fifth, but <clears throat> I feel like I got something in the works for me this year. We're gonna see. But yeah, those are my accolades, and then hopefully I can expound on that in the future. Oh, NCCAA four by one outdoor champions. Um. And then with one through three for NCC um, <clears throat> events as well. It's just a lot. I'm blessed. That's all I can say. But yeah, food's done. I just got to take the corn off. I'm lying. Put this in there. So I mess up again. Okay. <clears throat> food's done. But... I'm gonna show y'all my plate. And then I'm gonna go to sleep because I need to go to sleep. We're gonna have to clean up tomorrow because I only got an 8 at 9 a.m. class. I think. New schedule, new me. Don't know. But yeah. Nice to talk to y'all. Finally got to know me. Got the QA out the way along with the food. And uh, I'll catch y'all on the next video. Tell your aunties, uncles, daddies, mamas. I gotta think of a new one. Neighbors down the street. Yeah, aunties, uncles, neighbors down the street. Best friend, baby mama. Tell all of them about this video. Like it and comment on it. And then I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye, baby.